In this chapter, we are thinking and learning about ARIMA models. Remember, ARIMA stands for Autoregressive Integrated Moving Average Models. In the previous sections, in the previous two sections of the book, we focused on the integrated bit in the models, which is the reverse of differencing. In this section of the book, we're going to look at focus on auto on the autoregressive component of ARIMA models, hence on autoregressive models. In the next section, we're going to focus on moving average models, and eventually we're going to put all these together. What are autoregressive models? Well, an autoregressive model of order P looks like this. Yt is equal to C plus phi1 yt minus 1 plus phi2 yt minus 2 up to phi P yt minus P plus an error. Hence, this is a regression, but a regression with special terms on the right-hand side. The right-hand side are lagged values of the predictor, hence the term autoregressive, regressing on, its, on itself. Now, these are very highly flexible um, processes, and you can get all types of uh, 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 all types of data, all types of shapes of data. Um, and there's a couple of them here from an AR1 and an AR2, and we'll dwell into uh, a little bit more depth in terms of what these look like and understanding these. So here's an AR1 model where my phi1 coefficient is minus 0.8 and I'm generating from my standard normal zero one, and here's the pattern I, I get. So there's a couple of things to notice about this pattern. First, it isolates, it goes from negative to positive values, and that isolating behavior is because of the negative coefficient in my phi term. So my next observation is a negative proportion of the previous one. My next one is a negative proportion of the previous one, hence the isolating behavior. And it actually isolates around zero. Okay, just a little bit more on the AR1. So here's a general AR1 with an autoregressive coefficient of phi1. Now, when phi1 is equal to 0 or phi1 is equal to 1, we have special cases at the extremes. If phi1 is equal to 0, this is equivalent to white noise. This term um, drops out. If phi1 is equal to 1, this is equal to random walk. My phi1 term drops out, hence we've got a random walk. Now we require phi one to be somewhere between negative one and one, so it can be stationary. The closer the phi one is to these boundaries, the closer to uh, uh, wandering behavior um, above or below the axis we get, or above or below the, the unconditional mean. Um, as I said in the previous slide, if phi one is equal to zero, we get that isolating uh, behavior. Let's now include a constant in the data generating process. So my constant now is 18. So the behavior, the isolating behavior is the same because I have the same coefficient. I'm generating the same model, but I've added a constant. The constant is 18. But notice that the isolating behavior is not around 18, but it's around 10. Why is that the case? Well, let's look at a little bit more in depth for uh, into the AR1 model, including a constant. So if phi1 is equal to 0 and c is equal to 0, we go back to a white noise process. If phi1 is equal to 1 and c is equal to 0, then we have a random walk. Now, if phi1 is equal to 1 and c is non-zero, then we have a random walk with drift. Let's think a little bit about the mean of this, um, the unconditional mean of this AR1 process. So the constant is related to the mean, but it's not the mean itself. So let's let epsilon t is equal to mu. This is a stationary process. Hence, I can take that expectation through this. Expected value of y t is equal to mu. Expected value of a constant is a constant. Um, this is a constant, so expected value of that random variable is again mu. Expected value of epsilon is equal to zero. If I rearrange this a little bit, you see that expected value of y t, or the mean, is equal to c over 1 minus phi 1. So in our example, C was 18. Our uh, autoregressive coefficient is minus 0.8. Hence, the mean is equal to 10. Hence, we get the isolating behavior around 10. In R, in the ARIMA function, that will take, uh, whether you need a constant or not, it will take care of itself. You can override it, and you'll see how we estimate these and how we can override these in subsequent sections when we start talking about estimating these in R. 
Uh, he's just a bit of a flavor. He's the output um, of the simulated process. I estimated this, I estimated an AR1 using the ARIMA function, and I get back the AR1 coefficient and the constant, okay? The constant as I was writing the model. So I get back uh, what I write down here. I don't get the mean, I get the constant. If it does include a constant, then you'll see that the output will tell you that it is with mean. Here's an AR2 model. So now we have two autoregressive coefficients and two lags of yt, yt minus one and yt minus two. Notice here that we get cyclic behavior. And this is the first time that you see a cyclic behavior being able to be generated from model. Um, actually, these, these uh, were discovered by Yule in the, back in the early uh, 1900s, where he was studying um, the dark spots of the sun. And he realized that these have got uh, cycles in the cyclic length, uh, the length, um, the average length, uh, I think was around 11 years. So uh, because of those, that, uh, that behavior, he discovered uh, the, uh, this uh, type of model. Notice again, our mean here is not um, eight, it's 20. So that will be a combination of C and the autoregressive coefficients. Now we normally um, restrict our autoregressive models to be stationary for stationary data. Hence, we have some constraints on the parameters. The general constraints uh, given by these, so the complex roots of this polynomial lie outside the unit circle on the complex plane. Um, these are not too hard to, to, um, to actually um, derive. Just a, a couple of special cases for an AR1. So if P is equal to, uh, if P is equal to one, so I've got uh, only one autoregressive coefficient, phi one, we, we restrict phi one to be between negative one and one or the absolute value of it being less than one. If P is equal to two, then these are the conditions. It becomes more complicated if P is greater than three, but um, a REMA function will take care of itself. It will estimate a stationary model. 